The man who knows God. If you have been dealt with by God and have come to a true knowledge of him, you will know at what particular juncture another person cannot get through. You are able to help him because you have perhaps received dealings on this very matter for more than 50 times yourself. You do not speak to men about the Bible only, you speak to them of God. One summer there was a conference led by many famous people. I was told that I should go and listen to one preacher who preached so well in those days. So I went. He spoke at that particular session on how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The scripture verses he quoted were most appropriate. His illustrations were superb and his presentation was very logical. But after he had spoken for only 10 minutes I asked myself, was this the filling of the Holy Spirit? For although he spoke well, even so, from the few amateurish utterances of his, it was recognized at once that he did not know God in this particular matter. He knew nothing of the filling of the Holy Spirit. For this reason the knowledge of the Bible alone does not give us the knowledge of God nor enables us to speak of him. We must learn to walk the way of the cross. We need to be dealt with by God. The Lord did not disregard the will of God because he was the Son of God. Instead he prayed once, twice and three times to the Father till he could say, The cup which the Father hath given me, shall I not drink it? The Apostle Paul also prayed and prayed, until he was told by the Lord that his grace was sufficient for him. We know how the Corinthian believers misunderstood Paul. The letters to the Corinthians express his sorrow, as the letter to the Philippians declares his joy. Of all the Paulan letters, only these two are full of self-expression. But I love to read Corinthians more than Philippians. The Corinthian believers mistook him completely. They accused him of being subtle and misjudged him on his sickness. He did not insist that God should remove his thorn so as to escape the mocking of the Corinthians. He only said, Concerning this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he hath said to me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Because God had spoken, he did not force him to change his mind. Instead Paul declared, Most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my weaknesses, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. None will ever know God without having transactions with him. I once told a few brothers that there is only one way of making progress in the spiritual life, and that is by receiving God's dealing. If you refuse to accept dealings from God you will never make any advance. Should you only want to obtain knowledge of the Bible, you will merely need to study hard and to be assisted by those who have Bible knowledge. But if you really want to know God, you must have personal dealings with Him, for there is no other way. I treasure the experience of those who truly know God. From their utterances we may judge how well they know Him. A certain sister from the West was truly one who waited for the return of Christ. When I was in her presence I knew I could not deceive her, for a few words from her revealed how familiar she was with spiritual things. I remember how on the last day of 1925 I was praying with her. She prayed, O oh God, do you really allow the year 1925 to pass away? Must you wait till 1926 to come back? Even on this last day of the year, I still ask you to come today. I knew what she was praying. After several months, I met her on the road. She took my hand and said, Brother, is it not strange that he has not yet come? These utterances showed that she was not just a scholar on prophecy, but was one who had fellowship with God and who really waited for the Lord. She knew God. She was an expert on the second coming of the Lord. Once I met another sister. I thought she was a novice in spiritual things. But after conversing with her for a few sentences, I discovered that she was an expert. She was one who was having dealings with God and was being dealt with by God. One day in Peking I met an elderly believer. He did not have much Bible knowledge, nor was he admired for his practical living, yet he really knew God. During our conversation he said, Christ is responsible for everything. Though his family was quite poor, both he and his wife were happy. 
He asserted that in spite of many difficult problems in his life, Christ took responsibility for each one of them. So I asked him, what responsibility do you bear? I am responsible for singing hymns, he answered. This was just like King Jashaphat going to war with singers before the army to sing praises to the Lord. I inquired of him further by saying, you have forsaken all for the Lord's sake. Do you have regrets over what you have done? He replied candidly, why, you don't seem to understand, Christ, not I, is responsible for all these. Concerning this matter of Christ being responsible for all things, anyone can see that this believer is well ahead of us and that we have to learn this lesson from him. He is indeed an expert on this particular aspect of spiritual life. What we must have is not mere Bible knowledge, but knowledge which is learned from God. Oh, only those who have been dealt with by God know what is meant by the dealings of God. Must have God's dealings. You must have your environment dealt with as well as your sin dealt with by God. For instance, do you let things which appear in your family come and go as they please? Or if indeed you pray, do you pray for just once and then stop praying because you have not got an answer? How can you expect to know God? This is not Paul's way. He prayed a number of times till the Lord answered him. If you are willing to pray only once, you better not pray at all. You shall pray once, twice and three times, and should you receive no answer, you must pray ten times, or even a hundred times till God speaks to you. Let us remember that hastiness ought not of any place in faith or prayer. Faith endures time. If God does not give, we can wait until we are a hundred years old. We hope against hope. Abraham believed God. Elisha told King Josh to shoot the arrow upon the ground, but the king did so only three times and stayed his hand. Because of this, the prophet said to the king that he could only smite the Syrians thrice, whereas if he had struck the arrows to the ground five or six times he would have been able to smite Syria till he had consumed it. Such too is our prayer, that we cannot pray two or three times but then stop. A servant of the Lord once said, Prayer is like placing name cards on a balance. You put a one ounce weight in one side of the balance and add card after card to the other side. When the first card is thrown into it, it cannot raise up the one ounce weight. Card after card is put in, but the weight is still unaffected. Then perhaps at the very moment you throw in the last card, the weight on the opposite side is at last lifted. So it is with prayer. You pray once, twice, three times, and once more. Maybe this is your last prayer, but then the answer comes. For this reason, let us learn to have transactions with God. We must ask for God's dealings concerning our mortal body, our works, our families, our environments, and all our happenings. I knew a sister who was more than 60 years old. She had claimed that nothing in her life was accidental. I asked her whether her statement was true and she answered positively. I thought she might make such a statement during preaching, but it certainly could not be true in fact. Once a brother had a cold, and she wrote to that brother asking him what lesson he had learned through this cold. I imagined it was all right to ask a person who had contracted typhoid fever whether he had received any instruction from God. But how could one ask a person if he were taught of God in the circumstance of a common cold? Nevertheless that brother was really helped by her. He wrote back, saying that he was not at all concerned in the beginning, but having been asked he was awakened, and thus he was dealt with by God and was changed. There was another brother who had sickness in the family. Again, the sister wrote to tell him that he ought not let this sickness pass carelessly, but should take up the responsibility of prayer for the sick in the family. That brother was indeed helped by her. Once she herself was sick in bed, her co-worker had departed for another place. Her cook had gone home for some reason, and she had no money left. She kept on praying in bed, asking God why she should be ill at this time. God showed her that this sickness was not of him but was due to the attack of the enemy. So she declared, if I myself have anything wrong, I can be sick, but if this is a satanic attack, I ought not be sick. She had already had a high fever for four days, yet she instantly got up. 
Now it was at this time that this sister composed the following hymn. To the foe my word is always no. To the father it is yes. That his plan and all his counsel be accomplished with success. When thine orders I'm obey, grant me, Lord, authority to fulfill thy plan eternal. Through the Spirit's power in me, and upon finishing this hymn she went out to do work, and her sickness was gone. Whatever situation she was in, this sister saw the hand of God in it. She knew well what is meant by the victory of Christ. Once she told me, if only you knew the victory of Christ, I could easily discover from the Bible such passages as Colossians 2 verses 14 and 15 which tells of the triumph of the cross of Christ, or Hebrews 2 verses 14 which speaks of how through death the Lord Jesus renders powerless him who has the power of death, or 1 John 3 verses 8 which states that the Son of God appeared to destroy the works of the devil. Or Revelation 12 verses 11 which proclaims that the brethren overcame Satan because of the blood of the Lamb. Yet each time I heard this sister mention the victory of Christ, the word seemed to convey a special meaning in her life. This was something beyond my comprehension. Once I suddenly got ill while I was staying in her home. At that time I was not only physically uncomfortable, but also mentally disturbed by a few things. She came to see me, so I told her my condition. But each time after I said something, she would look intently at me and say, Christ is victor. To which I said, I do not mind this physical illness, but I shiver with cold sweat when the inward burdens are not solved. She came back again with, Christ is victor. I replied, this is not so. You may claim the victory of Christ over Satan. You may claim the cleansing of the precious blood over sin. You may claim healing over sickness because Christ has borne our infirmities. To all these you may say Christ is victor. But now I am at fault. I have not yet been reconciled with God, so how can you say Christ is victor? Nevertheless, she still insisted that Christ is victor. She read to me two scripture verses. There and then I came into the clear, both within and without. On that very day I began to understand the meaning of Christ our victory. Formerly I had only the scriptural knowledge of the victory of Christ, but now I learned a new knowledge from God. I commenced to see that the victory which I had had before was as a weapon made of reed which was totally ineffective. I now realize the all-inclusiveness of the victory of Christ. It includes victories over the enemy, our sin, our sickness, and over all things. Having been repeatedly dealt with by God, this sister knew what the victory of Christ is. And because she knew God, she was able to help others. Today many believers pay little attention to the Bible. May I ask which of the 66 books of the Bible you are most familiar with? How sad that many Christians do not even master one book of the Bible. But sadder still is it that they do not know God in a real way. If we want to know him we must not let anything pass by negligently, be it something in the family, of the physical body, or in the environment. We should have dealings with God. We need to pray till we get his answer. Through transaction after transaction we learn our lessons till we come to a true knowledge of God.